gonna be honest, folks. This episode is not one that has stuck with me, so we might be on a journey of discovery together here. I would like to nominate K-Gas, the Grooveyard of Solid Gold, for the episode with the most unwieldy title, though, and you can never take that away from it. Also of note, K-Gas, the Grooveyard of Solid Gold, was written by two-time Emmy-nominated producer Ruben Leder. He's beat out in the episode by guest star Jeff Garland, who's been nominated for seven. You might remember him as Donut Jerk in RoboCop 3. Ruben Leader and Donut Jerk both have more Emmy nominations than Baywatch ever got, which, I remind you, is zero. This montage at the beginning is a waste of time, but they do drop Baywatching into the lyrics, which is pretty much my life now. We'll be California dreaming Baywatching every day. This Beach Boys song, Summer of Love, not to be confused with David Hasselhoff's creepy song, also titled Summer of Love. Summer of Love was released as a single to tie in with Baywatch. It was included in one of their lowest selling albums and their distributor went bankrupt. I know there were multiple reasons for this besides Baywatch being involved, but it couldn't have helped. Unusually, the plot wastes no time in getting started. The radio station K-Gas, hosted by Larry Lumen Large, is broadcasting the grand opening of the Sandy K Cafe. As part of their promotion, they've started a large-scale pirate-themed scavenger hunt that must be completed before the end of the day, with the grand prize being a rare coin worth $100,000. Just soak all of that information in. In order to ensure the contest is legit and keep everything safe and legal, Garner is assigned the chief crypt keeper of the contest. Hello, boys and girls. This episode of Slay Watch is called K-Gas, the Groveyard of Solid Gold, and it'll leave you running in slow motion for more. <laughs> If there's one thing Baywatch hates, it's tourists, so they're none too happy to find out about this contest. Hey, uh, if they're worried about overcrowding, why didn't Crypt Keeper Garner drop them a line that this contest was going on? Did the lifeguards and the police have a falling out? I wish I could quit you, Mitchell. Anywho, the Sandy K Cafe is the former Jackie Summer Place, aka the Sandy Vagina, aka the Vagina Hut, now under new ownership. Now I know you're asking yourself right now, how can such a useless character as Jackie Quinn be replaced? Well, you bring in even less of a character, and that's Kay Morgan, aka Hoffwife. She's been missing for well over a season, and now she's back to be irrelevant again. You might be further questioning, how come Kay bought a restaurant when she's a reporter and has shown no prior interest in running a food-related business? Mitch is mad about the owner not informing them about this publicity stunt, but when he finds out it's Hoffwife, everything is forgiven. Would you like a mango strawberry smoothie? No thanks, I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> My friends can do whatever they want! She does say she didn't know about the treasure hunt though, so... How is what they're doing legal then? Oh. 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 Kay mentions that K-Gas is a new station, so she's allowed them a place to broadcast in return for free promotion. Wait, so the beach is going to be overcrowded with hordes of treasure hunters because of this unknown radio station all within its first day of broadcast? Is it really a helpful symbiotic relationship if both the cafe and the station are unknown? How is a crowded cafe on a beach good for sound recording on a permanent basis? I have questions! <laughs> I think this security guard in the background is my favorite character, by the way. So the idea of the treasure hunt is thus. The coin came from a pirate ship, and pieces of the ship's captain's last will and testament have been spread across the area. Participants must find all of the pieces and recite them on air to win the prize. Now, wanting to host a large treasure hunt and placing clues around the beach is not a bad idea. I do, however, find it slightly irresponsible to place the clues on the side of a fucking cliff face. I don't know, man. If you think real hard, you might see some safety issues arising. Wow, this was literally the exact thing I was supposed to prevent. I'm terrible at my job. Oh well, it's not like Garner is one of the only two people who know the locations of these clues and could have spoken up ahead of time. And now I'd like to introduce the only person on Earth, besides me of course, who knows the locations of all 
of the phrases of Captain Flynn's last will and testament. And here he is, Sergeant Garner Ellerby. All Eyebrows does is push this woman up onto the edge, and everyone acts like the rescue is over. But, like, they're still on the side of a cliff. Oh well. During the very rescue involving two people almost dying because of this treasure hunt, Eyebrow spots the clue and is struck with gold fever. And near the Vern crown, a witch's hat was worn. Oh well again, fun treasure hunt stuff! You can get it if you really want. I'm just looking for a cat turd that got buried here. Mother of pearls! Yeah, I'm sure this is making for good radio, man. Angel of the Sea, don't go. I want you. I need you. I love you. Inspector Clouseau has joined the treasure hunt, earning him a scolding from CJ. I can't help it. The lure of easy money has such a strong appeal. There's no such thing as easy money. Unless I gamble my gambling addiction away, then it's super easy. You know where else is a good place to put a clue? On some dangerous rocks in the ocean! I just don't understand how these accidents keep happening. Four people have nearly died, but we just don't have enough to shut this thing down. Now that more people have been put in danger, I'm even more determined to find this stupid treasure. Hmm, you've got a point. Let me fantasize about me winning that contest. Why do you haunt me so? Until I'm rich, I can never lay naked in bed or stand in the hay with some guns. Boy, CJ's daydreams sure are fan service All it takes is one fantasy about herself posing sexily, and CJ is all up for winning that questionable contest. She sure has a strong moral center. She might be flip-floppy on her morals, but she and Eyebrows are damn good at solving clues. If this isn't a grim and ghostly place, I don't know what is. Sure, let's go with that. They're on duty, by the way, on a day where they're short-staffed and overcrowded with reckless people, so good job at being professional, life-saving individuals! Sacre <laughs> bleu! It's the ghost of Forty Summer, back to haunt me from college! So this Dorco has found all of the pieces of the will before them, but just as he's leaving, they're stopped by string bean and beefcake. Nobody's going anywhere. How does this keep happening to us? It's like we're stupid or something! So what was the plan? Recite the clues on the air and hope the people you threatened with a gun and tied up don't report you? Oh, that's right. Because it's treated comedically, it doesn't matter. <laughs> We're all wanging it big time this episode. Okay, so how about that punishment for sucking as lifeguards? The truth is, with Stephanie off sailing halfway around the world, I can't afford to lose anybody. So no suspension necessary. So Mitch it be. How could this happen? Ooh, who's this stud muffin? But wait, there's more! It turns out, the contest was rigged, so the person at City Hall who signed the permit for the radio station could win the contest. Those sons of Mitches! I doubt that was officially licensed by Disney. Arrest him! Oh no, we forgot I don't know how to swim! Yikes! After a scene where they basically pull a Scooby-Doo wrap-up of the entire scheme, Garner gets in one last zinger. <laughs> I just repeated his name nonsensically! That calls for a toast! To me! Next time on Baywatch, Geraldo Rivera stops by to act. Meanwhile, a magic wind makes everyone on the beach horny. Summer of love!